I'm Gyan Alami Chane. I'm a junior faculty member here at Johns Hopkins University. I'm an assistant professor of medicine in the Center for TB Research. When somebody gets infected, they go to a clinic and uh, most of the people are clinically diagnosed as having TB because they've lost weight, they cough, they have blood in their cough, and when they do look at the blood, cough, uh, coughed out blood, they can see smears uh, of TB, they can see TB bacilli under a microscope. So, and the doctor prescribes them uh, a series of drugs, a combination of drugs, mostly INH, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol, and so forth. Those are the primary drugs, and most of the patients uh, respond to that. That means after the treatment, within a few weeks, they feel better, and within a few months' time, they actually, the disease is cured. But over the time, because of the extensive use of the drugs, or, and, and people not uh, adhering to the drug regimen, they don't complete the treatment, so the bugs that have, by genetic mechanisms, by nature, we all mutate. Our next generation is going to be different. And some of those, out of a million of them, out of a billion actually, if there are billion bugs in your uh, lungs of an infected person, a couple of them will be resistant to a, a drug. That means they have understood and they have a mechanism now to detoxify that drug. So they're able to survive and grow in spite of this insult that is otherwise able to kill their siblings. So once you've killed those all one billion bacteria except two, they have all the resources to utilize and divide and, 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 and multiply, right? And then they infect another person. So when that person goes to the clinic, they cannot be treated with those drugs. So now we're at a position where many of the drugs that we have cannot be used to treat a good percentage, I'm talking about 10, 15 percentage of the uh, of, of patients. And in some areas of the world, um, there have been reports of strains where they are practically resistant to most of the drugs that we have. So imagine a person who is, who is walking around that can be infectious, that can transmit the disease just by coughing. But that person cannot be treated with the drugs we have today. Long ago in the West, the West was separate from the East or, or, or South or what have you. And uh, uh, after the intervention uh, with uh, antibiotics and mostly because of the public health measures and sanitation, all of these contributed, awareness, all of these contributed to getting TB to the level that was below the political radar. By political radar, I mean, yes, it was there, but it was not in enough numbers that the public was energized to tackle this. Uh, but now, uh, I would like to say the West and the East have that, that membrane has dissolved. It's a one war. If we tend to think about West and the East, we are still in old school. Today, you will see so many people flying in and out. SARS has taught that us, taught that to us, and now, H1N1 is teaching that, right? With SARS, it was detected in southern uh, China, and within a couple of days, it was in Hong Kong. And remember, the next spot was in Toronto, right in our backyard. So yes, there are political borders. You know, yes, when we have a map, there are all these countries labeled. It's for us. It's for us to get a visa or get a ticket to a different country. But for a bug, it doesn't care. It's just being traveling around, around the world. So we, I think we have, if we look from our perspective, yes, there, are west, there is West and East still today. But if you look from the bug's perspective, it's a world for it to grow in. Primarily awareness. If, if there is any problem, uh, here TB is a problem. Obviously, there are a lot of other problems. One of the aspects about tuberculosis, it's a tortoise. It's a turtle. It walks very slowly, but will, it will beat the rabbit. It will beat the bunny because it walks very, very slowly and people tend to forget about it. But it's still there. So we, we tend to gravitate towards acute problems. Right now, if I have swine flu, then I can, I, there's a possibility I will die in the next week or, or so, right? Uh, but with TB, if you have TB now, you could be treated over time. But if you think about it, TB is one of the pathogens, infectious pathogens, in the human history that has killed most people, simply because it is slow. And that's the, that's the reason why it's successful, is it's able to 
get into the human psyche in such a way that we will forget it for a little while. But the public should be energized. They should know that if it is there until we completely wipe it out, it will come back. It has come back in many times in the history, and it is there. And when it comes back every time, it's going to be a little bit more potent.